Okay. Good morning, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. Welcome to this meeting of the Audit and Corporate Governance Committee. My name is Councillor Tony Mason, and I'm the chair of the committee. Can those present in the council chamber note that anything on your desk, including your laptop screen, is likely to be broadcast at some point? The camera follows the microphone being switched on, so councillors and officers are advised to wait a couple of seconds before speaking to allow the camera to catch up. Please can those participating in the meeting via the live stream indicate that you wish to speak via the chat column. Please do not use the chat column for any other purposes. Make sure that your device is fully charged and that you switch your microphone off unless you are invited to do otherwise. Please ensure that you have switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that, so that they do not interrupt the proceedings. Please use a headset when speaking and hold a microphone close to your mouth. When you are invited to address the meeting, please make sure your microphone is switched on. When you finish addressing the meeting, please turn off your microphone immediately. Speak slowly and clearly, and please do not talk over or interrupt anyone. Item one on the agenda is apologies for absence. Patrick, are there any apologies for absence today, please? Uh, yes, Chair, we've just got apologies from Councillor Jeff Harvey. Thank you very much. Are there any do any members have interests to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? If an interest subsequently becomes apparent later in the meeting, please would you raise it at that point? So no. So if we come to agenda item three. Uh, members, we now come to item three, the completion of the 2018-19 accounts. May I ask Deputy Head of Finance, Fazana, to present this item? Thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm pleased to inform the committee that the uh, account, audit of the accounts for 2018-19 have been completed on the 29th of March. Uh, the auditors uh, have provided an unqual unqualified opinion um, and there's further details in their report, which is item four in the agenda. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the lead project accountant um, and the team and er Ernest Young for uh, working hard and coordinating to complete this audit. Um, the timeline for the completion of the 2019-20 accounts, um, to produce a draft set of accounts, we require about 10 to 12 weeks. This will include producing the statements, the notes to be included in, included in the statement of accounts and um, the supporting documentation to go with this. Um, EY, thereafter, EY require around about six to eight weeks to carry out their audit, and this includes their um, sampling, testing, and investigative work. Um, I can also inform you that um, EY will be carrying out a walkthrough testing, and this will commence next week for a two-week period. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? No, no questions from the committee. Okay, so thanks to Fazana for presenting that report. The committee is asked to note that the final accounts were signed off on the 29th of March and an unqualified op opinion on the accounts has been issued by the auditors. The timescales for the completion of the accounts for 2019-20. So if we go to agenda item four, <coughs> um, the audit results report from external audits on the 2018-19 accounts. May I ask Janet Dawson to present this report? Thanks very much, Chair. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly. Are you all good? We can, yeah. Excellent. OK, thank you very much. Um, so you'll find from page 119 of the pack our final um, audit results report that sets out all of the detail of the work that we plan to do, um, the work that we've completed and our findings as a result of that. Um, as, as already reported to the committee, uh, we signed our opinion on the 29th of March, and it was an unqualified opinion on the financial statements, uh, but it included an acceptable conclusion on the value for money arrangements relating in specifically to the difficulties that the and weaknesses that the council had um, been uh, experiencing as a, within the finance function to be able to um, report on a timely basis. Um, and we have rehearsed a number of those points um, through the progress of this audit. Um, 
I think it's important to just to take you from um, 100 and page 124 through the key areas of our findings so that the committee is um, fully cited on those. So um, we set out there the significant weaknesses, the significant risks that we identified in our planning of the audit and the work and conclusions that we um, uh, are reporting back to the committee now. So you'll note that um, on misstatements due to fraud or error, management override of controls, um, we completed our testing and found no indication of um, management override of controls. Um, in terms of um, the focus around incorrect capitalization of revenue expenditure, again, we've completed our testing and found no indications that that was occurring. In terms of presentation and disclosure of accounting items, this was a significant risk as we started the audit, and we did identify significant issues with the treatment of um, property, plant and equipment, which have required a lot of effort from management to revise disclosure notes and also the numbers within the accounts uh, relating to those items. Um, we had identified that the data migration into the new fixed asset register, which took place to support the reporting of 1819, was an area of significant risk. And there were significant deficiencies in the accuracy and completeness of the output of that new fixed asset register for 1819. And again, management has had to do significant work um, to resolve the uh, issues in the data migration exercise. That resulted in a prior year adjustment reflected in the accounts of 6.4 million in the revaluation reserve. And we have made um, a number of recommendations in section seven of our report about improvements to those um, arrangements and controls going forward. And then again, we had identified the risk um, of the implementation of the new financial management system um, during the same financial year. Um, and we uh, had used our IT specialists to look at the migration of data there. So whilst we uh, were comfortable that that data had migrated successfully, we have made a number of recommendations again. Um, and those were reported back at the time um, of the work in 2019. There were some other areas of audit focus that we had in terms of the valuations of um, other land and buildings and housing assets. And we identified some significant issues in how those valuations had been undertaken and how those were reflected in the draft accounts. And those resulted again in significant amount of um, rework by the council to um, revise um, their disclosure um, in the accounts. Uh, the other areas on page 125 included the pension fund liability um, group accounts um, preparation, the going concern disclosure and the implementation of new accounting standards that took place in 2018-19. And um, whilst there were some areas that needed um, a little bit of rework, work, there were no major findings um, in any of those areas. So I've already talked about the um, audit adjustments that we've reflected um, at the bottom of page 125. Um, so that you can understand the significance of the changes from the draft accounts that you saw to this final version. And um, I have talked already about the uh, qualified conclusion on value for money arrangements and the control observations that we've included in section seven. And I would um, you know, strongly recommend to the committee that they pay attention to those actions, um, what the, the team's response to those is and how and monitors how those are implemented going forward. That's all I wanted to uh, present on the report. Happy to take any questions. OK, thank, thank you, Janet. Uh, if I can just uh, invite Fazana to, to um, provide a, a response to, to the report before we, we come to the committee members. Fazana. Thank you, Chair. Um, so in terms of recommendations, we have taken on board what you all have outlined. And we have um, two pro interim project accountants who are supporting the team to uh, enable, us, enable us to provide more accurate information. We are providing training to, to uh, team members to ensure that our, the working papers that we provide are of ac an accurate and complete nature. Um, and there will be an improvement in the evidence that we provide. And we are collating and coordinating and planning um, how how to obtain this information and what we are expecting from the team members. Um, in terms of, and this will also uh, heavily invest in um, investing in the skills 
that we are, you know, we are investing time to train our uh, um, team so that going forward, when we are up to date and we are able to take the price of the final accounts ourselves. Um, in terms of the Tech One data migration and the FAR, there is a project team within the council now, and we do have um, a dedicated team where the project has to go through um, a systematic approach. So there is a strategy there, and we would have um, the activities pre and after migration. So, um, and then lastly, the creditors, where there is no reconciliation of the creditor subledger. We are implementing a reconciliation to be carried out monthly, and I have spoken with the T1 consultants to have their viewpoint from a system perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chair. And through yourself, if I could just um, clarify on page, sorry. 126 of your packs and 38 of the um, document from the external auditors. Uh, on 156, so mine's okay, 156 in your pack, it's 38 in mine, but there we go. Um, we have uh, the fee analysis. I just want to check on the housing benefits on note six. I'm assuming that's a, a typo, it's not £14. 18 and a half pence, and that actually it's 14,185. Just so we could clarify that, please. Um, the other thing is, we do have two estimates on there. Given the work is complete, I'd, I'd be expecting, Chair, for this to be, you know, the bill to have been served and um, for them to know. And I'd also like to know if included in these figures is a discount for the inconvenience caused by the external auditors on delays as was the case in the previous year when they had um, issued delays themselves. Just want to make sure that that has been taken into consideration in the fee calculation. And depending on that answer, Chair, I, I might have a uh, supplement to yourself. I mean, I'll let Janet respond, but I'll, I'd say the fees will be subject to a PSAA review and, and by, and by this council as well as a PSAA and the auditors to come to a conclusion, but I'll let Janet provide details response so yes you're right that is a typo that should be a, a, a comma not a full stop so thank you for pointing that out um, in terms of the final fees you'll appreciate that we finalized the audit on the 29th of March and immediately produced this report um, so that it could come to committee in time for papers um, we didn't have time in that um, few short hours to update the fee analysis and uh, provide you with the final figure because clearly that is something that takes a few hours to investigate you know go back through our own systems and identify the information and then uh, you know analyze it to make sure that it's under the correct headings we're held uh, very tightly to, to account by PSAA and it's important that we report that accurately um, both to the council and then to PSAA. So we, we've given you the estimate um, at the time of completing the audit. You'll appreciate that all of the effort was going into getting the audit done rather than spending time analysing figures. Um, we will turn our attention to that um, as soon as uh, people are back from holiday, make sure that we've got that analysis right and we'll be providing it to uh, PSAA. Um, I think if you uh, would like to understand how PSAA set the scale fees and determine scale fee variations. They have lots of information on their website, which talks about the process that they go through, how they um, assess those and what they take into account. I don't think that you'll find that they um, talk about discounts because actually that is against FRC rules. Thank you, Chair. If I can come back. Can I, yes, I do appreciate it would be the document, but my point was you've had nearly two weeks um, to come back to us with the final figures. So I was hopeful that you would have the figures today, but it doesn't sound like you do for your own resource issues. Um, the other, other thing that I would say is on the discount, if that's the case and you can't discount, then why did your colleagues do it last year? I can't comment about um, what you believe my colleagues did last year, but I can assure you that they didn't provide a discount on the cost of the audit. 
Chairman, can I propose that it's looked into and the minutes, and you will record Mr uh, Suresh um, confirming that there were percentage, there was a percentage discount that was advised this committee. So if we could look into that um, as a council, because I feel that's only right and just given the delays that have been the responsibility of Ernest Young. Um, and uh, so my beliefs are based on the facts that were given to us at the time. I don't think I've got any other questions, Chair, other than to say that I think this committee as a whole should endorse these fees going to the PSAA for full review. Okay, agreed. Chairman, if that's a formal proposal, I'm happy to second it that the PSA look at this as a formal review. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, 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 if it's a proposal, I, I accept the proposal, but it's for the committee to, 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 to agree <laughs> as well. So, that, yeah, the, the, the committee takes on board that, that comment and, and uh, agrees with it. Okay. And any further comments for, for Janet? So there's no, no, further, no further comments. Okay. So the committee, the committee is asked to, to, to note the, the report and yeah, I thank EY for their attention over the past few months whilst we've reached this conclusion uh, and hopefully we, we can now agree and, and move on in that 10 to 12 week period and get the next years done succinctly and on, on time. Okay, agenda item five is matters of topical interest as we only met last week. Oh, sorry. Uh, Chairman, I, if you recall, I asked if um, some small investigation could be done, if we've got any investments or anything at all which could be linked to Russia. Um, I don't know if anything has happened or if there's an update to be made. I'm, I'm looking across and I'm assuming there's no update to be made at this precise time, and therefore we'll hold that over till another meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so if there's no further matters of topical interest, um, we'll conclude the meeting. And uh, the date of the next meeting will be held on Thursday, 28th of July at 10 a.m. And uh, as this is my final event as chair, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their attention and their consideration during the past four years. And thank you to the, the officers and, and the council and to, to EY. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chairman.